Spicy Medtech here. And ito na po yung continuation natin sa ating series on the different board exam recalls and must-knows. And for this episode, I will be covering clinical microscopy. Let's begin. Number 1. What is the normal renal threshold for glucose? A. 120 to 140 mg per dl. B. 200 to 240 milligrams per dl c 100 to 150 milligrams per dl or d 160 to 180 milligrams per dl so ang answer po natin dito sa number one ay letter a so ang renal threshold po natin is ang concentration ng isang substance bago pa ito madetect sa urine na inexcrete natin and these substances ay nagre-require ng mga carrier para matransport sila from the tubular lumen papunta sa vasa recta and kapag masaturate na po itong carrier saka na po siya lalabas sa urine so answer po natin for glucose is letter D 160 to 180 milligrams per dl number 2 the ova of which parasite will most likely be recovered from urinary sediment A. Ancelostoma duodenale B. Entamoeba histolytica C. Schistosoma hematobium or D. Trichurus trichuria So, answer po natin dito sa number 2 ay letter C. Schistosoma hematobium So, the reason behind this is that the adult trematodes of Schistosoma hematobium colonize the blood vessels of the urinary bladder. These eggs are yellowish, non-operculated, and have a prominent terminal spine, thus making it an ova that is most likely recovered from the urinary sediment. So the answer is letter C, Schistosoma hematobium. Number 3. The following crystals are all pathologic except A. Hemosiderin B. Bilirubin C. Ammonium biorate or D. Cholesterol So ang answer po natin dito sa number 3 ay letter C, Ammonium biorate. So, itong ammonium birate po natin is seen only in normal and alkaline urine. And it does not primarily root from pathologic causes. However, they may appear in old or poorly preserved urine samples. So, letter A, hemosiderin results from intravascular red blood cell destruction. Tapos, itong bilirubin natin is found in severe liver disease. Tapos, yung letter D naman, which is ang cholesterol, ay makikita natin in conditions like nephrotic syndrome and hypercholesteremia, which is indeed pathologic. So, ang answer po natin dito sa number 3 ay letter C, ammonium birate. Number 4, which of the following is associated with the renal calculi? A. Cysteine B. Ampicillin C. Tyrosine or D. Leucine so, ang answer po natin dito sa number 4 ay letter A, cysteine. So, itong cysteine natin is formed kapag may defect ang tubular reabsorption ng dibasic amino acids. So, cysteine crystals are highly insoluble, thus making them ideal in forming kidney stones. Letter B, ampicillin crystals are sometimes found in patients treated with high doses of ampicillin. Letter C, Tyrosine crystals may form in patients with liver disease or an overflow amino aciduria. Tapos, itong letter D naman, which is ang leucine crystals, are seen most likely in patients with chronic liver disease. So, for renal calculi, our answer would be letter A for cysteine. Number 5. High cerebrospinal fluid WBC count is termed as letter A, neutrophilia, Letter B, pancytopenia. Letter C, pleocytosis. Or D, leukoplakia. So, dito sa number 5, ang answer po natin ay letter C, pleocytosis. So, pleocytosis is the term used kapag mataas yung CSF WBC. So, kapag mataas ang WBC sa ating CSF, it can be caused by many different things. An increase in neutrophils may suggest mga bacterial infections. Yung lymphocytes naman ay magsasuggest ng viral agents. Tapos yung fungal agents may cause multiple cell 
pleocytosis. So, pwede din po magkaroon ng pleocytosis in other conditions like uh, multiple sclerosis and cerebral hemorrhage. So, for number 5, our answer is letter C, pleocytosis. Number 6, standard pregnancy test kits detect for which hormone? Letter A, oxytocin. Letter B, human chorionic gonadotropin. C, progesterone. Or D, estrone. So, ang answer po natin dito sa number 6 ay letter B, human chorionic gonadotropin. So, itong human chorionic gonadotropin or yung tinatawag natin na HCG is produced by the placenta after implantation and is in detectable amounts in urine roughly within a month after conception and is used as the analyte of choice in most pregnancy test kits. Itong oxytocin natin is also another hormone important in pregnant women as it helps in uterine contractions and lactation but is not used in standard pregnancy test kits. Progesterone is another hormone released by the corpus luteum and it aims to regulate yung lining ng uterus which is ang endometrium. While ito namang estro natin is an estrogen form that is significantly weak and is found in menopausal women. So answer for the standard pregnancy test kit analyte would be letter B, human chorionic gonadotropin. Number 7. Which of the following may increase in long-standing urine specimens? Letter A, nitrites. Letter B, bacteria. Letter C, pH. Or letter D, all of the above. So, ang answer po natin dito sa number 7 ay letter D, all of the above. Why? So, itong letter A po natin, yung nitrites, may increase because yung ibang type ng bacteria ay nagko-contain ng enzyme that will convert urinary nitrates into nitrites, making it a very good indicator of urinary tract infections along with bacteria, and leukocytes. Yung letter B naman, which is ang bacteria, may also increase through the reproduction via binary fission. So, tapos yung letter C naman, pH, may also increase in the presence of urea splitting bacteria. So, itong urea splitting bacteria natin ay nag-hydrolyze ng urea. So, yung product niya ay magiging ammonia, bicarbonate, tsaka carbonate. Thus, increasing the total pH of the specimen. So, the answer is letter D, all of the above. So, number 8. Dark green substance forming the first feces of the newborn infant. Letter A, melina. Letter B, meconium. Letter C, villi. Or letter D, none of the above. So, answer po natin dito sa number 8 ay letter B, meconium. So, itong meconium po natin is composed of different materials na na-ingest nung infant nung nasa uterus pa siya. Yung letter A naman, yung melina, is the term used to describe yung dark tarry feces associated with gastrointestinal bleeding. Tapos itong vilay natin, ito naman po yung finger-like structures na nasa intestines natin. And yung trabaho nila is si sila ay nag-increase ng surface area para mas ma-absorb po natin yung pagkain. So, answer for number 8 ay letter B, meconium. Number 9, what is the most common reversible cause of male infertility? Letter A, varicocele. Letter B, castration. Letter C, chlamydia. Letter D, gonorrhea. So, ang answer po natin dito sa number 9 ay letter A, varicocele. So, this condition is yung pag-enlarge ng veins within the scrotum. So, ito po ay similar sa mga varicose veins na makikita natin sa ating mga paa. Resulting into low sperm production, poor sperm quality, and ultimately infertility. But can be reversed with surgical methods. So, answer natin ay letter A, varicocele. Number 10. Which of the following is not a characteristic of nephrotic syndrome? A. Proteinuria B. Edema C. Hypoalbuminemia Or letter D. 
none of the above. So for number 10, ang answer po natin ay letter D, none of the above. That means all of the choices point to nephrotic syndrome. Hypoalbuminemia is caused by the proteinuria and increasing filtration of plasma proteins leading to albuminuria and ultimately to hypoalbuminemia. This comes along with a decreased plasma oncotic pressure. Yung edema naman occurs because of serum hypoalbuminemia. Low serum oncotic pressure causes fluid to accumulate in the interstitial tissues, which is then aggravated by the retention of sodium and water. So normally, in healthy individuals, the glomeruli filter out the waste products and allow the blood to retain cells and proteins na kailangan ng body. But when the glomeruli are damaged, yung mga proteins may leak into the urine, thus explaining the marked proteinuria or an increased protein in the urine, which can be up to 20 times more than what a healthy and functioning kidney would allow. So all of these choices point to nephrotic syndrome. So yan lang po muna for clinical microscopy. So I know I promised na to make the videos longer and to accommodate more questions, but I will be finishing the first set of six. So. For the remaining histopath and MD loss, I will still be doing 10 questions. And for the next batch, I will try to push around 15 to 20 questions per video. So for now, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below on any other topics you want me to cover. So for now, if my friend kayo na magtetake ng board exams ngayong September, you can link them to the video below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.